Hello everyone, I'm Professor Ricardo, and in this video we are going to solve a problem about differential constraints. Consider the following constraints x squared plus y squared dx plus xz dz equals zero. This is a differential equation. And x squared plus y squared dy plus yz dz equals zero. First, prove that each of these constraints is separately non-integrable. Then, prove that taken together, these, these equations, these constraints, are equivalent to these other two differential equations of constraints. And then, conclude that the system is holonomic with the following constraints. Okay, so first, let's prove that this equation of constraint is non-integrable. The procedure is the following. We will try to obtain a non-vanishing integrating factor, which is a function of x, y, z, and t, and we will multiply the constraint by this factor. And let's suppose that this results in an exact differential element of a function g, which is integrable, giving us the holonomic constraint g minus c, which is an integration constant, and this is equal, uh, this is equal to zero. And this is a holonomic constraint. So, if we can find such an integrating factor, then the original constraint is integrable. The left-hand side of this equation is h x squared plus y squared dx plus h x z dz. And the right-hand side, let's write this as partial derivatives with respect to the variables of the function g, x, y, z, and t. So it will be del g del x dx plus del g del y dy plus del g del z dz plus del g del t dt. And we will recognize that del g del x is the coefficient multiplying the differential element dx, which is h x squared plus y squared. Del g del z is h x z. The other two partial derivatives, del g del y and del g del t, they are equal to zero. Now, if you consider the property of partial derivatives in which a second order derivative of a certain function with respect to z, then with respect to y, is equal to the derivative of g with respect to y, then with respect to z. So, del g del z, we know that it is h x z. So, the left-hand side of this equation will result in del del y of h x z. x and z does not depend on y, obviously. So, this is x z del h del y. In the right-hand side of this equation here, we have del g del y, which is zero. So, this is equal to zero. And then, del h del y must be equal to zero for any value of x and z. As a consequence, h has no dependence on y. h is a function of x, z, and t. It's not a function of y anymore. Let's do the same, but instead of y and z, let's use y and x. Del g del x is this term here. So, the, from the left-hand side of this equation, we will get del del y of h times x squared plus y squared. And this is, obviously, uh, this term multiplying the derivative of h with respect to y, plus h multiplied by the derivative of this term, in parentheses, with respect to y, which is 2 times y. And del g del y is equal to 0. So, from the left hand, right hand side of this equation, we conclude that this is equal to 0. And since del h del y is equal to 0, we get that 
h2y is equal to 0. So for any value of uh, x, y, z, and t, this must be equal to 0. As a consequence, h is equal to 0. So there is no integrating factor and the, const and the constraint is separately non-integrable. We can do the same for the other equation of constraint and one can note that it's very similar and symmetric to the other equation. So under an interchange between x and y, from x and y, we obtain the other one. But I guess uh, it's useful to solve it explicitly to help our training and uh, we will do it a little bit faster. So the integrating factor that we are looking for multiplied by this equation of constraint here, this must be equal to this exact derivative of a function g, which we can write as partial derivatives. So we can recognize that del g del y is equal to this term multiplying dy, and del g del z is equal to this term, this coefficient multiplying dz. The other two partial derivatives, they are equal to zero. Using this property of uh, partial derivatives, del g del z is equal to h y z. So we get del del x of this term. And this, we know that y and z does not depend on x, obviously, so we get this result. And from the right-hand side of this equation, del g del x, this is equal to zero. So this is equal to zero as well. Again, del h del x is zero, and then there is no dependence on x in our integrating factor h. Let's do the same, but now, instead of x and z, let's use x and y. Del g del y is this term, so we get del del x of that term, and this is equal to x squared plus y squared del h del x plus h multiplying the derivative of this term with respect to x, which is 2x. And del g del x, this is equal to 0. So, again, del, x, del h del x is 0. So, h2x is equal to 0. And for any value of x, we need, we, we have that h is 0. So, there is no integrating factor and the constraint is separately non-integrable. We conclude that taken separately, both equations of constraint are not holonomic. But that does not mean that the system is non-holonomic. We need to consider both equations together as we are going to do next. So let's prove that taken together these two, these two constraints are equivalent to these other two differential equations. First, let's write this differential element as, solving this differential element, let's write it as 2 times x dx plus 2 times y dy plus 2 times z dz. Let's write 2 as a factor and then we obtain this result. Let's do the same for this other differential, which is the differential of the logarithm of y minus logarithm of x, the natural logarithm. And solving this differential, we get 1 over y times dy minus 1 over x times dx. And solving this equ equation, we get in the denominator xy and in the numerator x dy minus y dx. Let's skip this result here, and it will be uh, useful for us soon. And let's sum the two original equations of constraint, these two equations. We get x squared plus y squared dx plus x squared plus y squared dy plus xz dz plus yz dz equals 0. So now let's, co let's consider these two terms in blue. And we're going to write this term x squared dx as 
x multiplying x dx. We are going to include, we are going to add this other term, x, y, dy, and subtract it, minus x, y, dy. Then we are going to write x as a factor, and z dz, and this term here, it is written here, y squared dx. Let's do the same for these other two terms, y as a factor, but first let's add this term, yx dx, minus yx dx. y squared, instead of y squared, let's write it as y times y dy, plus y as a factor, then we get this term, z dz, plus x squared dy, which is here. This is equal to zero. Now, this term in, in parentheses and this term is the same, so we get x plus y times this term. And instead of writing this term in blue this way, let's write it this way here. x as a factor, then x dy, minus y dx. Let's do the same for this term in green. Minus y as a factor, then we get x dy, minus, because this is plus, minus y dx. This is equal to zero. So now, we can write these two terms here as x minus y times this term in parentheses, x dy minus y dx. Okay, so now we can recognize that this term here is equal to 1 over 2 this differential element. And this term here, it is the numerator of this term. So we can write it as xy times this differential element. And that is equal to 0. We can see that this equation is zero for any value of x, y, and z. And as a consequence, both differentials must be zero. So, this must be zero as a consequence of this result, proving um, that uh, taken together those original equations of constraints are equivalent to these other two differential equations. Now, uh, let's conclude that the system is holonomic with the following constraints. It's very straightforward that the integration of this equation is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus a constant of integration, c1, and this is equal to zero, as we would like to prove. And the integration of this equation here results in the logarithm of y over x minus a constant of integration equals zero. We can write that as y over x equals the exponential of this constant c. And let's call, let's call this term as another constant, for instance, c2. And then we can write that y is equal to c2 times x, or in other words, y minus c2x is equal to zero, proving that the system is holonomic indeed.